after a one week off week. Sabbatical. Call it a sabbatical. We took a sabbatical. A, sabbatical. a vacation. We went to the sorts. beach. Yes. You know, it I'm was nice. I'm kidding you didn't. No. But no. It would have been nice. I almost cool. got snowed into Iowa. You almost did, yep. I, I drove. Well, no, that was a couple weeks ago. before, yeah. It was in South Dakota. A, so. mad, a mad dash from South Dakota back to <clears> Houston, <throat> Texas. It's fun times. 20 hour drive straight. Mm, and I'm well rested since then now. So, yep. always. Ready to go. Always. I'm kicking it. It's good stuff. All right. So, so we are back uh, this week. We're going to be talking about something uh, that's at the forefront. Uh, this week it's Life Week. Life Week. Uh, this week uh, <coughs> on Friday in Washington D.C. Uh, yesterday uh, there was a march uh, for life. Uh, I will be there uh, exhibiting, or I was there. I'm leaving today. We're recording this. Oh, time! It's a wobbly, wimbly, wobbly thing. You can't yeah. determine. It's all circular. It's fun times. That's from Doctor Who. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I was a very there exhibiting. Christmas song in that. So. Doctor yes, uh, we've heard. Yep. Yes, we've heard all a, about it. You know, it's fun times. So, but uh, I interrupted. I'm sorry. No, no, no. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. So, Life Week. Pastor Hall, tell us a little bit uh, about what Life Week is. You see, the problem with life is we shouldn't let it enter into just a political thing. That's kind of what it becomes now is are you pro-life or pro-choice? Because we have a rule on this podcast. We're not going to talk about We're it. We're not going to go but political. The thing is, you shouldn't talk about it. It is a, it is a biblical, theological, Christian life thing. The reality is Christ became man at conception in the womb of St. Mary. Mm -hmm. That's where God and man join and you have the person of Jesus the Christ. So life is claimed from the moment it begins all the way through and unto the life that is to come. And Christ became that for us. So how do we view life then is we're very much, we, we rejoice in life. We rejoice in life in Every stage that God gives it, mm -hmm. from the beginning all the way to the end, and then even how it's resting in the ground, you know? And you don't have to be a Christian to say, well, I respect cemeteries, but we as Christians have a different reason. Right. That's where they're resting till the day of the resurrection. resurrection. We care about how we handle bodies because your body is claimed to live forever. God didn't create your body to live for just 80, 90, 100 years. Your body is going to live eternally because it will be resurrected on the last day. So we care about these things. So we need to kind of take it, and it's not that we're pro-life. We just rejoice in the gifts God gives us. Mm -hmm. And that gift is life, both here and unto eternity. So if we, if we kind of <coughs> take it apart and just centralize it to an issue on abortion, then that's not actually taking all of it together. And then you're just pro-birth, which we right. are as well. We, yep. We're for birth. But the thing is, when you look at, let's say, abortion, that's the big thing, is, well, we just don't want you to kill babies. Mm -hmm. but the thing is, no, you care for the woman who has the baby. You care for the child in the womb. You care for the man. A lot of abortions happen, and the man has no clue they're happening, even though they may have wanted the child, and, and or vice versa, the woman's being forced into having one. Mm -hmm. You know, and The thing <clears throat> is, if we actually have this rejoicing in all life, then this doesn't become an issue. It's not us trying to say, just don't kill this child. It's we rejoice in your life. We rejoice in his life. We rejoice in that life because God has given it. And that's the big thing is seeing God as the giver. The giver who gives this gift. And we don't, and we rejoice in it from the moment of conception all the way totally to the yeah. end. Yep. Because that's one of the big accusations, right? Is those who are like, anti-abortion are just that then they don't really care about children who are starving oh the, they don't probably really... the biggest accusation at least in, in our current times. Yeah. yeah you know we don't care and and you do and you you do what you can to help mm -hmm. i was talking to my son the other day about this we were talking about something called malthusianism mm -hmm. you know and there's two forms of malthusianism you have the original malthusianism which was this guy named malthus he was an anglican priest this is back in the 1800s, and he's seen the expansion of the British Empire, and everyone's seen how big the world is, you know, how massive everything is. So he says, you know, we got to slow this down. There's way too many people. we got to slow it down. So his view was chast basically refraining from sexual activity. Yep. Fast forward to the <clears throat> 1900s. Now we have the advent of birth control. So now you can still do this population control without having to sacrifice the yeah, yeah, yeah. pleasure. Yep. 
And you still have that prevalent today. As, as I said in a class uh, one time, I said we have sex without babies and babies without sex. That's kind of where we are now. So life has become this really confusing thing. When does it begin? What is life? And it, it's, it's not as easy as just saying I'm pro-life. You're, you're living sacrificially for life. As Christ gave up his suke, is the Greek word. His, we translate it as life, but what it means is his entire existence. Yep. He gave up on the cross for you. So now we give up our suke, psyche you almost call it, for others. But as I was talking to Lonnie about this, um, I said there's really, it's not a population issue. It's do you live for your neighbor or not? You can throw all the money and food you want at a starving country. But if there's someone intercepting it and taking it out, yeah. you know, then it doesn't matter. Which is what we see happen <laughs> most times in third world countries, unfortunately, and things like that, too. You know, you think of, like, what it means to love and enjoy and receive life. When you go to the, to the uh, restaurant, you throw all the food away. Mm -hmm. You know, when you eat the Thanksgiving meal, you may eat leftovers the next day, but by day three, you don't want turkey and stuffing and all this anymore. So right. what do you do? You chuck it. Right. Is even your diet plan something that's for and rejoicing in life? Um, so there's not a population, because that's one of the big things is, you know, when we look at rejoicing in life, that God is the one that gives it. If he gives you one child, we rejoice. If he gives you 12 children, you rejoice. Yep. If you don't have any, you, you suffer that, which is difficult as well. So all of it, all the way till that last moment, it's still life God gives. And we still rejoice in it. And we rejoice yep. in it. We don't, it's not for us to end it. It's not for us to burden it. It's not for us to neglect it. It's for us to rejoice and live sacrificially for it. So, and maybe that's actually the best thing. Marching is fine. But the question we have to ask is, what? how are we called to live on a daily basis for life that Christ defines by his death and resurrection for us? That's the key thing. So... And being pro being for life is like I said a very complex thing. Yep. Because one of the most hot button issues of our time. Yeah. For sure. I mean, it very much is. Um, and the more the more we rejoice in one another's lives, in families, and in children, it's hard if the church doesn't do this on a daily basis. But then once a year says, "Oh, we're really for this." Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. It's, it's hypocritical. Yep. So, and I mean, and also like the way we care for each other too. Like you were saying, we're caring for your neighbor and putting putting yeah. them before you. Like we have to do that in our everyday lives. And yeah. We're gifted to do that in our everyday life, right? I mean, that's the thing is you're given to have this joy of caring for your neighbor on a daily basis. And when you care for your neighbor, you're you're taken out of yourself. Mm -hmm. You're no longer caring for yourself, and and that re frees you. I mean, that's Lutheranism. Lutheranism is the freeing denomination. It's what Luther means, is the freed one. We're freed in the forgiveness of our sins, our life created anew in holy baptism, nursed in the sacrament of the altar. We now live like who we are, those who are destined to live unto eternity. So in the meantime, we love everybody. <laughs> so awesome. that's the fun part. That's so good, good thing to be pro-life in yep. that way. That's good stuff. All right, that is our episode here today check us out next week we'll be back to a regular schedule we promise for all six of our listeners uh check out uh our website <laughs> yeah yeah they're sticking around there's all only right. six it's like the spartan army you know yeah. it's small but it's powerful. powerful uh check us out on higher things that we have a lot of exciting stuff coming out vbs released this past week uh and a whole bunch of stuff with under the cross coming out too talk to you soon au revoir